From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Hi, kiddo. Carter at Universal Adjustment. Jim, how are you? In a rush. I have to catch a plane to Tucson, Arizona. Lucky you. Nice there this time of no, year. No, no, listen. One of our brokers out there wrote a 50,000 straight life policy on a man named James Lansing. Lansing dropped dead two days ago. Uh-huh. And you'll never guess why. I'll bite. Why? Mr. Lansing starved to death. What? With a 50,000? Honest. He died of malnutrition. Got the coroner's report from Tucson right in my hand. Well, if a man could buy a $50,000 policy, he ought to be able to buy himself a square meal. Yeah. Johnny, flight 203 leaves at 1045. You interested? See you at the airport, Jim. Tonight and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to the Universal Adjustment Bureau Home Office, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Lansing fraud. Expense account item one, $178.13. Cost of plane ticket, Hartford to Tucson. I shaved, showered, packed, and got out to the airport in time to have breakfast there. Jim Carter found me at the cashier's cage. Hey, kiddo, you won't need a coat out there in that desert country. As usual, Jim Carter was bigger than I thought. A man who stands six foot five always is. A little ruddier, a little more blustery, but as efficient as ever. I wrote a special delivery airmail to the insurance commission in Arizona this morning and explained it worldwide. They wrote the policy. We're holding up payment pending investigation. Well, you could have told them that in person. We'll be out there as soon as the letter. Well, I like to be formal on these things, especially with the state commission. Besides, I'd just as soon let them think we'll get around to a routine investigation later in a week or two. In other words, you didn't tell anybody we're coming. No, I didn't. Maybe we can work it better this way. The faster we move in and find out what's what and aren't bothered by anybody, the better off we'll be. Hey, give me your ticket, will you, Jim? Yeah, sure. Here you are, pal. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, Johnny, that commission is going to get formal sooner or later and ask a lot of questions. Mainly, why doesn't Worldwide honor the claim and pay off the beneficiary? So we'll have to skedaddle and get ourselves some good answers for him. Yeah, you know? sir. Hey. You may board the plane. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, pal. Has anybody asked that question yet? Well, the beneficiary, sure. Uh, James Lansing's sister, his name is uh, Arlene Kennedy. She called the broker, and he referred her to claims division at Worldwide, and she called them long distance, and then they called me. I told him to put her off for a while, telling her it was just routine. I see. Is she going to be tough? Man, she could be, Johnny. I understand she has money of her own, and she has some influence in and around Tucson. Oh, a lot of money? Yeah, and trust. She's very comfortably fixed. Yeah, watch yourself, kiddo. This, uh, Mrs. Kennedy is pretty upset by the whole business. Can't blame her for that. James Lansing died on the street with no identification on him. By the time police found out who he was, a routine PM had already been performed to determine cause. You know, the county was going to bury this guy? With $50,000 worth of insurance? Yeah. <laughs> Imagine that. Oh, excuse me, lady. Excuse me. Uh, the postmortem never had happened unless Lansing dropped dead on a public street. Yeah, I see what you mean. So I requested the coroner's office in Tucson to hold the body until we can get something done. Better fix your seatbelt, sir. Hmm? Oh, yeah. Yeah. First thing that occurred to me when I saw the PM findings was that it might not be James Lansing at all. Chronic heart condition, lung history, debility. Doesn't sound like anybody worldwide would insure. Lansing took a physical before the policy was issued, didn't he? Of course he did. See, have you got any material on his insurance examination? Sure. Right here. Standard form. James Lansing was 100% okay when the policy was issued a couple of years ago. Malnutrition, lung history, chronic heart... How could he get in that bad shape in two years? <laughs> That's a pretty good question, Johnny. I bet the answer is going to be great. Yeah. What's the examining physician's name? Uh, I see. Examining. Oh, here it is. Uh, Dr. Carl Mayhood, Suite 932, Valley National Building, Tucson. He's our first job, Johnny. Hey, cute stewardess. 
Yeah. Well, back to business, kiddo. It was a long trip, and I spent most of it going over the material in Jim Carter's briefcase. By the time we circled Tucson Airport at 4.45 in the afternoon, I had the facts pretty well in mind. Expense account item two, 350, cab fare, Tucson Airport to the Pioneer Hotel. Jim Carter and I took adjoining rooms. I unpacked my clothes and got on the phone. A Sergeant Younger, Tucson Police, had made the DOA report on James Lansing. Yes, he was in. Yes, he'd be glad to talk to me. I left Jim Carter contacting the state medical board. Glad to meet you, Mr. Dollar. How do you like Tucson? Well, I've been here two hours, Sergeant. Weather's certainly nice. About like this all through the winter months. It's a little warm in the summer, though. Yes, sir. Um, now this Lansing matter. Yeah. There isn't really much to tell you, Mr. Dollar. One of the cars answered the call. A man was found dead in the doorway of a jewelry store about four blocks down the street. Uh-huh. This was the uh, day before yesterday, Sergeant? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I went down to the scene and called the coroner's office. No identification on him, so we started to check him out. Took us a little while. By the time we got a make on him, the coroner had already performed an autopsy. Yeah, I understood that was about the way it was. Say, tell me, how did you identify him as Lansing? One of his prints matched up on our cards here. Lansing was booked on a traffic beef a year ago. Otherwise, we'd still be trying to make him. You're sure it's Lansing over in the morgue? Yeah, we're sure. His sister came down, identified him. Name of Kennedy. Yes. Well, what did Mrs. Kennedy have to say about the cause of death? Nothing. That malnutrition bit didn't do a thing for her. Not huh? a thing, no, sir. We all thought Lansing was some sort of a transient. You know, just some old bum until we identified him. Uh-huh. Any witnesses to see him die? No, we haven't found any. According to the coroner, he'd been dead an hour or so before anybody noticed him at all. Happened early in the morning. I see. Say, did uh, Lansing have any other business down here other than that uh, traffic violation? Nope. All right. Uh, who do I have to see to get into the morgue? Well, I'll phone the coroner for you. Won't be any trouble there. You want to go over now? No, later on, maybe. Uh, Dollar. Yeah? Death was from natural causes. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. Then no matter how much you investigate, you people are going to have to pay off. Well, aren't you? Maybe. We just have to be sure of one thing. What's that? That we insured the right man. By the time I finished with Sergeant Younger, it was six o'clock. I phoned the hotel and Jim Carter, busy and efficient as always, had already gotten the vital statistics on Dr. Carl Mayhood. Northwestern University Medical School, 1940. Army Medical Corps, 1941 to 45. Dr. Mayhood's license to practice medicine in Arizona was issued in June of 1946. Married, two children, income and practice, according to Carter, was average. In person, Dr. Mayhood was a tall, blonde man Dr. in his Mayhood. late 30s. He Every looked like he needed hours, a week's yes. rest and a few laughs. Day and night. You have an alarm clock around the house, Mrs. Garland? Well, use that. Yes. Goodbye. Yes, sir? Dr. Mayhood, my name's Johnny Dollar. I'm from Hartford. I represent the Adjustment Bureau handling a claim for worldwide insurance. Well, what does that mean? I'm an investigator. So? July 14th, 1953, you examined a man I'd like to get some information about. I hope this won't take too long. Uh, was it an insurance examination? Yeah. The man's name was James Lansing. Do you happen to remember him? James Lansing. No, I can't say that I do remember him, Mr. Dollar. What about him? Well, I'd like to show you the standard examination form first. Is this your signature? Hmm. Is that your signature, Doctor? I suppose so, yes. I don't know. Aren't you sure? Well, how many people are certain of their signatures? It looks like my signature, Mr. Dollar. I can't say for sure if it is or isn't. All right, what about these? Are these notations on the form in your handwriting? I would think so. I don't know. It, it looks like my handwriting. I can't say. According to this form, you gave Mr. Lansing a complete physical and pronounced him sound. That's my job as a doctor on these insurance examinations. Anything unusual about that? Mr. Lansing died two days ago, Doctor. There's nothing unusual about that either. Did they send you all the way from Hartford so I could tell you to go back there and buy a book on heart disease? 
You can get them anywhere in the country. The simplest kind, not even a doctor's book. Read it, know it, and don't take up my valuable time. Now, let me have that. Sure. Hmm. This patient Lansing was 41 years old. If he had no heart condition when I examined him two years ago, and obviously he didn't, according to my findings, it's entirely reasonable to assume that he could have developed heart trouble in a very short while, even the day after I examined him. You people gauge those things in your premiums. Why do you bother me? Are you finished? Huh? I take it you've had yourself a tough day, Doctor, and you don't want to be bothered with anybody. Now, look, I'm not here to bother you. You Just from what's on this sheet and what's happened, you're in enough trouble to get yourself involved in a police investigation. I'm here to try to avoid all that for you as well as me. And please don't lecture me on heart trouble, incidentally. We know the statistics by age, race, color, climate, state, religion, occupation, geographical area, and sex. It so happens we don't have to go into that, Doctor. James Lansing died of malnutrition. Hmm? I said Lansing died of malnutrition. I'll be doggone. Coroner's report. Look for yourself. Hmm. Well, he should know. Now, was it possible for you to overlook that condition at the time you examined Lansing? If he'd been suffering from malnutrition in any degree, I would have discovered it. And noted it. According to the coroner's findings, James Lansing had been ill several years. The lung and heart condition existed at least ten years. Can you explain how you were able to pronounce him physically fit, doctor? No. I can't. Well, how about this? The angina condition. I could have missed that, but it's unlikely with the degree of aggravation noted here on the coroner's report. Have you had much experience reading chest x-rays, doctor? Of course. The lesions reported by the coroner. If there'd been any lesions on Lansing's chest, I would have reported them. I can't explain that either. Well, now you understand why I'm here. Certainly. I wish I could help you. You can. Just let me see your file copy of the examination and the x-ray you took at that time. I'll have my nurse look them up. I don't keep files over a year old up here. We have a place down in the basement. Okay. I'll have them for you tomorrow. What time tomorrow? As soon as possible. like to have them first thing, Doctor. You're kind of on me, aren't you? That's right, Doctor. I'm kind of on you. There'll be another intriguing episode in our story of the Lansing fraud tomorrow. Tomorrow, $50,000 is a good price for a killing... Most anybody will listen for that kind of money. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood, written by John Dawson... It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone. Be sure and join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar, Roy Rowan speaking.